Today we will continue our learning outcome four. But the first component of this learning outcome we have already discussed in the previous lecture, and today we will discuss four point two and four point three, in which we will assess the methods that are used for installing, supporting, and maintaining a network. Also, we will explain how to support a network using the mode access methods. So these are the two components. Let's continue with the command words that we have. We here we have the command words assess and explain, and the assess means the relevant information to make a judgment. We will see the uh, online sources and we will get the information from them, and then we will produce a convincing argument for the judgment, and we will make the documentation done as per the assignment activities, and then. In the second question, we need to explain, which means to make something clear to someone by describing or revealing relevant information in more detail. So this one will be a detailed information about the topic that will be explaining everything clearly. Let's continue to the first question in which we need to assess methods used for installing, supporting, and maintaining a network. Basically, uh, for your networks to benefit your business, you must run it effectively. If the network is not working properly or effectively, then it will not benefit your business. If you want to get the benefits, definitely you need to work on it. After the installation, there are multiple factors that we need to work on by the passage of time. We need to ma maintain the services. We need to give it the, the support to the user who are going to use the services from your network and then you must also carefully plan how you will maintain and develop it and after the installation you need to make a proper plan for the maintenance so that you can get the better idea about the working and also you can track what are the issues or bugs that are the part of the network and you need to solve them for the sake of Installation and maintaining your network. The first thing is to appoint a network administrator who will do the stuff for you. For a small network, it is worth appointing a network administrator and supporting that person with additional training. If you are having a network administrator and after you give him um, additional training that will help them to understand the network and its complexities and then they will be able to deal with the with the network properly. Ideally, the administrator would have some technical knowledge, but you can bring in expertise where necessary. So uh, basically, they are the technical people who are going to perform the activities. But if there is something that is more confidential or you can say that more complex about the network, you need to have the expert knowledge as well. Although this can be costly, definitely, if you are going to hire an expert, in the networking department, definitely you need to pay them higher. Choose someone who is methodologically and good at keeping record and managing the task. The basic responsibilities for this person who is going to be your network administrator are the security, which includes the password monitoring and disaster recovery plan. If there is something that is uncertain happens to your network, they need to have a proper plan to recover from that, that circumstance. As the network grows, the network administrator will need further training. Definitely, at this point, you will need their expertise to also cover the installation, configuration, and maintenance of the PCs that are connected to the network, networking equipment, and network operating systems. It is a good idea to define exactly what type of emergency support and after sales services your technology provider should supply, as they can be an important point of contact for any query or problem you may have. If they cannot provide these services, consider another supplier who can provide you the services that we are talking about. The next thing is the network maintenance and uh, compatibility. You also need to maintain your network. You will need to monitor software compatibility. This doesn't necessarily mean automatically getting the latest software release available. Compatibility needs to extend across the network, so you should carefully plan and budget for an upgrade strategy. Make rules for file naming to ensure that changes take place to the right file at the right time. 
मल्टीपल फाइल कॉपीज विल बी क्रिएटेड एज एम्प्लॉज डाउनलोड सेंट्रल फाइल टू वर्क ऑन ऑफ साइट एंड अपलोड दम लेटर naming rule prevent overwriting of any changes made to the original files if there is something if we are talking about the file naming system if there is something that is changed to the previous file but its name is same as the new file many people can um, confuse the names of the file and ultimately the user can user can add different uh, details to the wrong files too. so for the sake of methods that we can use for the for the maintenance and for the installation processes we have the push deployment method this is basically a wizard which we can use as an alternative to client deployment wizard basically uh, uh, this is an alternative to deploy the client software to remote computers and automatically install it to all the remote remote users you would need administrator rights privileges to the windows domain to which the client computers belong or to the computers themselves if they are in work mode you need to have the administrator right, rights and ultimately you can assign uh, like uh, install the software or the client software or whatever the uh, required application that is uh, that is needed to be installed easily on the on all the pieces that are connected to the network you can use the push deployment wizard to install clients in a remote location where you have two systems but the bandwidth between the two locations is very low and you are unable to install all the clients at one time so this is an easier method uh, to use for the installation and also for the maintenance purposes we can also use this wizard so that we can easily add all the features to the uh, to all the systems that are connected to the network in one time and we don't need to do the stuff again and again to make the system work in a better way then we have remote control softwares okay just let me know is it clear to the previous point yes ma'am clear to now Okay. So the remote control software or remote access control software are the type of software that enables a local user to connect to and access a computer remotely. Whenever you want to have remote access to a to a software, uh, what you need to do is basically you need to have a tool that will let you access the get the access to that particular software. With this tool, two or more devices or network nodes will be able to connect to one another in varied geographical settings. After establishing the connection, the user takes complete control of the remote device. They usually require a host and a client, where the host is the computer that grants access, and the client is the computer that requests access. so this is how you can um, basically use this um, uh, remote access uh, you just need to have the two uh, the access to the computer that is going to grant you the access and then you can easily get that access and enjoy the remote services of that particular software application then for the sake of installation and maintenance purposes there are different kind of methods that could be used if you want to have the plan that is going to work for your network you need to have a proper plan and after that you need to communicate this thing to all the people who are going to join the network whenever you have planned a, net, uh, a maintenance either it's a planned one or it's the need of the time or you have immediately uh, planned something to uh, to do the maintenance or make some changes to the network settings or the network operations what you need to do is you need to inform the audience or all the people who are the part of that network so for this uh, for the sake of this activity or the communication we have multiple ways just like you you can do this face to face you can do this on telephones and you can use emails for the uh, for the information of the audience to make let them know what what is going to happen the scheduled maintenance itself is crucial without it there could be security problems like bugs might not, might go unfixed and new features may be unavailable uh, available to users so for the sake of their their ease and also um, to remove the bugs that are the part of your network you need to make sure that audience is 
noun of the maintenance that you are going to perform. However, appropriate and timely communication is just as important as the maintenance itself. Before you announce the scheduled maintenance to your employees, it's important that you understand what impact it is going to have on them and their work. Asking yourself these key questions can then help you to devise an appropriate announcement. And what are the questions that you need to ask yourself before announcing the scheduled maintenance? You need to ask yourself, will all your services be taken offline? Like it's going to affect all the online services that are already working or you need to make them offline or some of the services will be affected. Second, is the software one that is a priority for your employees? If the, uh, just like if we are talking about the CRM software, let's suppose we are talking about the uh, CRM uh, system. Uh, if the employees that who are related to the, uh, to that particular software are the part of your network, then it's basically the priority for the, all the employees. But if the employees are, some of the employees are using this system and not all the employees are using the system, then you need to let yourself know before before scheduling the maintenance. Then the next thing is what will be the impact on service delivery? Like if you have, uh, if you are going to make some changes, how it will impact the delivery of the services that you are already uh, providing? And will external customers or other stakeholders be affected? You need to make sure that the, the external people or the components who are linked to your network uh, will have some effect of it or not? Will it affect all users in the company or just some? Just like uh, in the previous point, just like we are talking about the external customers or stakeholders, how we can see not all the people are related to the same thing. Just like um, if you're going to make some changes or the, uh, going to perform the maintenance or the bug removal of some of the components that are basically related to the internal work of the organization, but uh, the external work or external interface of the system will remain same. So you can uh, easily answer this question that these people like the external customers or the other stakeholders will not be affected by this. Same uh, in this uh, question, will it affect all users in the company or just some? It depends upon the people. It depends upon the thing that you are going to change. Either it's the central point for all the people or it's some uh, it's a service that is uh, related to some of the people. You just need to understand it. So the next question is how long will the maintenance last? Like the duration that is needed to do the maintenance task. And next is, is it unavoidable to do this during regular work hours? So you can see if you can avoid this activity during the work hours or you can do this after working hours and uh, just like in the night or in the weekend so that uh, the overall services or uh, work services of the people or the employees will not be affected by this. But if it is not possible, then definitely you need to do it in the working hours too. Are there any actions you need your employees to take? If there, if there is something uh, just like some of the credentials are given to the employees, so uh, what you are uh, expecting here, you need to check. Either they need to do take some actions or uh, it, uh, is it the one, you are the one who is going to perform all the actions. Only after you have all the answers, start creating maintenance notifications. When it comes to communicating with employees, you should ensure you give them plenty of notice. After all, unlike unplanned outages, you know when a planned one will happen. So letting people know ahead of time will help them prepare for the systems being unavailable. A system maintenance message sent in advance is able to prevent company losses and improve the IT department's reputation. So when people know about the about some unavailability of the services or the system access, then they can make sure that the things are working properly and they are not going to uh, like uh, try to um, access the services again and again because if they will not be known of the uh, downfalls of the system, then definitely they will try keep on trying to access the services or maybe some of the important activities of the employees or the customers will get affected by it or ultimately they will lose the interest and also the reputation of the IT department will be 
affected by this process. So the best practices for uh, communicating scheduled maintenance are basically the bigger the impact, the more notice you should give. Just like if there is something that is going to make all the services unavailable, uh, available for all the employees. So what you should do is you should give them the notice before time. And even uh, when the time came near, you should inform them again so that they may know that the services are going to be stopped and they need to prepare for this. Don't just send one reminder, schedule multiple reminders so people don't forget. Use a variety of communication channels. Like if you are having multiple channels linked to the network, then you can uh, convey the message through all the mediums. So let's suppose we have talked about the telephone and the email services. If you are having access to this, you can send them a message. You can also send some emails. And if you are having access to the face-to-face -face employees, you can give them a reminder on face-to-face too. -face if there are going to be significant impacts, you need to be clear about what they are and what people need to do. If it's a minor upgrade, you may not need to send alerts. It's important not to bombard people with too much information, but rather find the right mix. It's just like you should give them an idea about what is going to happen. You don't need to inform them properly or exactly about each and everything. Use scheduled maintenance templates to save time. Know your audience and communicate appropriately. If the outage affects everyone in the organization, then you need to send notifications to everyone. However, suppose only a handful of employees will be affected. In that case, you should send to a custom audience only. People who get irrelevant information can become annoyed and then stop reading your future communications. So it's better to first choose the audience who is going to be affected by the by the maintenance or upgradation, then you you can only communicate with them and ignore the other people who are the part of your organization. So this is how we are. We can uh, basically convey the uh, installation and maintenance messages to the network employees. I hope it is clear to you. Yes, ma'am. Clear. Very clear. Let's move forward to the second question. It's to explain how to support a network using remote access methods. The remote <coughs> access controls refer to the ability to monitor and control access to a computer or network, such as a home computer or office center computer anywhere and anytime. Employees can leverage this ability to work remotely away from the office while retaining access to a distant computer or network. Remote access control applies to local area networks, wide area networks, and even virtual uh, private networks so that data and systems can be accessed remotely. It depends upon the network, which, which kind of network you are having. You can get the access to the services or the network remotely, and you can perform the services or all the tasks by staying anywhere. So why you should use these remote access controls? Security is essential when providing remote access for a user to connect to an organization's network or for a user to connect to his private server at home. Deploying remote access control provides a secure connection it minimizes the risk of data theft and law or loss and malicious activities since you are controlling the connection. Therefore, not allowing unknown entities to access private or corporate data. However, um, it's a question for you. If we are not having a, a private or corporate data or Let's suppose we are having some kind of confidential data. But if we are having general uh, network that we are having at our homes, and I think it's not considered as a very secure network if we are uh, generally talking about. So what do you think? Like uh, remote access control will be a secure impact for the, for the organization or not? <clears throat> Ma'am, uh, remote access should only be first of all provided to the authorized people because even if the data is confidential or not, remote access can give a backdoor to the hackers. 
and they can exploit the network and they also can uh, you know leave them always or any kind of uh, botnets within the network which may collect the confidential data on different timings and can upload it to the uh, to to the hackers servers so the remote access should only be given to the authorized people uh, regardless of uh, if they have access to the confidential data or not that's number one uh, number two um, remote access if it is for a home network which is considered not as a as a very secure um, uh, network like oh. you know home based something even that that is very crucial because if if a, there is a remote access to these kind of networks like home based network for let's say hotels or somewhere um those um, the users who are connecting to these networks can be uh, vulnerable because there is a network access to uh, some unauthorized people Very explained. I hope I understood. Yes, perfectly fine. So here we have some remote access control methods. The first one is the direct or the physical line. The first direct remote access control that can be implemented is a direct line from a computer to the company's land. Additionally, the same line can be used to connect a homeland and a company land. This type of connection provides faster speed but is more expensive and requires maintenance due to hardware usage. Some of the limitations are the co it, uh, it is a costly overall experience and the routing limitations, not as secure, prone to failure. So how these are the factors or the limitations affecting the, the overall direct line connection. The costly is expensive option due to the cables and hardware needed to establish the connection. Definitely, we need to have the, the, the usage of cables and the other hardware, just like the uh, routers or the switches that will be needed to make the connection between the devices. So this will be a costly connection. Secondly, uh, the routing limitations. Limited to the structure of the routing from one point to another, it will possibly have to go through a non-controlled area such as streets and buildings and definitely it will be having some limitations for routing. Not as secure, insecure due to possible interaction in the cable or hardware without the user knowing. So we cannot consider it as a secure one and prone to failure possibility of damage to the cable or the hardware from external conditions such as weather, human interaction and construction work. Then the second method that we have is the virtual private network. Another method which is more common is establishing a VPN. VPNs use the internet to connect remote sites and users and use encryption and tunneling techniques to access a company's network. So this one is considered as an encrypted connection and this option is ideal for smaller organizations and some of its limitations are additional software for secure connection like need to install new software to establish the connection and uh, if we talk about the operating system there are some restrictions to the need of a specific operating system depend on the client software the next thing is complex configuration the vpn needs to be configured and appoint an account for each user so the configuration will be complex because of the individual account making for each and every um, a point who is going to be connected with the network. Then the next method is deploying Microsoft RDS, the remote desktop services to perform a remote access controlled connection using Microsoft RDS. The client software must be available on both the local machine and the remote computer or server. Alternatively, there are solutions such as the Citrix virtual apps and VMware or parallel remote application server that enhance the remote desktop services, enabling the use of a web browser for client-less access. Some limitations when deploying RDS are limited load balancing functionality. The RDS broker is responsible for the distribution of connections between the different servers in the farm. The technology is minimal because it only distributes a connection based on the session count and server weight. So the uh, it depends upon the weight or the you can say that the 
compatibility of the server, like the lower that the server can bear only, uh, it will only be able to make the connection if it is having a proper load balancing. Otherwise, we may see the, uh, the limitations to the functionality of the overall network. Difficult to install, configure, and update the installation and configuration of virtual desktop and application delivery solutions with Microsoft RDS are lengthy and complicated. System administrators are required to install and configure multiple different servers and server roles and install additional software to assist the process. So definitely, if we are going to make different roles and multiple uh, different servers and uh, need to um, allot them the roles and then install additional software to assist the process, then definitely it will become a uh, timely, also a uh, difficult process to configure. Then we have limited support for guest operating system in a VDI deployment and Windows Server our virtualization host server only support Windows 10, 8, 8.1, and Windows 7 Enterprise as guest machines. So uh, the limited support to the guest operating system is also one of the limitations of this process because we are not having it uh, compatible with all the operating systems that we are having. Then we have some common features of remote access control software that must be the part of these um, these softwares. A remote access software allows user to access a remote computer from any location, regardless of their geographical location. After a connection is established, the user controls the remote device completely. In other words, remote access control software allows two or more devices or networks to connect remotely. The general features that these devices or the software should have are, the first one is the security. Because we are talking about the secu uh, security consideration, this learning outcome is based upon the security components. So security is the main concerns of all these topics. Whenever you are dealing with these, Remote access softwares, we need to make sure that these are the secure things for our network. Most remote access control software does its best to incorporate good security features into their organization as remote access needs, remote intervention, and exposes devices to potential cybersecurity threats. Just like you have shared the point, it's the same thing. We need to make this connection more secure because there are more chances for the malicious attacks to be done. The next feature is the authentication. Yet another feature of the remote access um, control software is authentication before accessing a remote computer. Remote access control software requires remote access codes and the passwords to be entered before allowing local computers to control remote computers. Then we have the sharing tool. Remote control uh, software solutions also having shared uh, shared tools that let users share files from one computer to another, allowing a mutual connection to be set up between local computers and the remote devices so that we can easily share the files and the media that we want to share between the end users. Then we have the customization tools. These tools are yet another feature of remote access software that allows you to customize the appearance of a remote desktop, manage the resolution of the local computer, or view the remote computer on full screen. So these are the methods that you can use for, uh, for the remote access softwares. And uh, you can create the remote connection or remote access of the softwares for different kind of networks with these uh, methods. However, there could be multiple other methods too that could be used for this process. Whenever you will do your assignment activity uh, in the assignment class, we will definitely talk about this. But uh, just like we need to make sure the points that we are going to cover. Basically, whenever you are going to do the assignment activities, you need to make sure that these points that are mentioned in the like in the suggested evidence of the assignment activity and the 
uh, indicative content of the learning outcomes both should be covered properly there are some points that are missing from the uh, in the suggested evidence but are the part of the indicative content you need to make sure that you are going to work on both of the points some of the points are part of the suggested evidence but some are skipped from that so you will try to add those points to into uh, in the assignment so that we can have better understanding of the topic and we can explain it more clearly and it will definitely be graded well i hope it is clear to you yes sir <coughs> yes sir okay so let's move to the questions we have two questions you can answer one of your choice what is the role of maintenance in the network security and what is the benefit of remote access software in the network security? Uh, i'll answer the second one uh, the benefit of remote access software in the network security is that sometimes uh, uh, we have like remote locations or somebody who is working from home they can still manage to uh, remotely access to the network and uh, they can, you know, I mean, if there is like they have uh, 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 daily activities to be performed, they can do that. And also they can make the maintenance uh, of the systems after the working hours. If let's say uh, they are not allowed to be in the premises, in the work premises, in the working hours. And this can also help in many other ways. For example, business perspectives, some of the companies who are subcontractors and are working in other countries. For example, let's say a company in Saudi Arabia have a contractor, which is a developer a software company working in India. So it's not easy to bring in the whole the team uh, by you know providing visas and all, right? So we can give them a privileged based remote access uh, to this network and they can perform their duties and this way the data in uh, stays in premises and also it's safe and we can get the, uh, the, the, the project done remotely as well. Perfect. Okay, so do you have any question? Uh, no, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. 